Okay, hey, this is Tony Lee Glenn, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial about how to knock out green for photos. Only I'm using Adobe Premiere for this, and this is really almost a more elegant way than any other way I've been able to do this uh, for portraits in Photoshop. In Photoshop, there are, of course, a thousand different ways you can clear out these backgrounds. We could take this into Photoshop, and I could do a color select, and I could try to get rid of all that, and I'd still end up with a lot of little fringing around the hair, uh, there's way, there are ways you can, of course, grow your selection and all that, but I never have found any way that's easier than this. So if you have Adobe Creative Suite, the full version of CS5, and you have Adobe Premiere, this really is very handy for, uh, let's, like, for instance, let's say we want to put a background behind this. We don't want this green screen. We can put any background we want behind this gentleman here that I've got a photo of. So I've got a couple of folks here that I've pulled in. And uh, first of all, the photos that you shoot in uh, Photoshop, naturally, with, with your camera, are going to be much bigger than what you would typically find in Adobe Premiere. So if you open up one of the presets, uh, you're going to find that you, the photo is way larger, and, and you want to be able to get all those pixels. You're going to maximize your pixels. Let me show you how I set this particular project up. I'm going to do a File, New, Project. I'll just do this again the way I did before. And I'm going to pick HDV. Uh, not DV, you got DV here as the old standard, but HDV opens up a whole lot of different sizes for you that you can use to create large photography as well as video. And uh, I'm going to call this Portraits 2. Already got the other portraits set up. And we'll say OK. Now it's going to ask you what kind of sequence to use. You know, a lot of times I'm using AVC HD, 1080p, 1080i, this right here. But for this, we're going to choose one of the red RD3. The reason we're choosing this is because it allows you to go in here and edit sizes much better than almost any of these other uh, presets that are available. A lot of these are grayed out, and you can't. They're just presets that are set. Red, apparently, they've uh, set it so that you can actually go in here and monkey around with things. I like to pick red RD3. I twirled that down there, you see. Then I like to go to the 4 underscore 5K version, and I'd pick 2997. Any of these really will work. We're just exporting frames from this. We're not exporting video, but I'm going to pick that one. Then I'm going to go up under General before I do anything else. And I know that uh, my Nikon D5100, I've got my notes here, shoots a 3264 wide by 5000 uh, pixel tall image, roughly 5000. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to choose my frame size here, and I'm going to say horizontal is going to be 3264. And I'm going to say my height is going to be 5000. This down here at the bottom, you don't even have to worry about this. This is just uh, video previews. And I'll say OK. And what you'll see I come up with is a very tall, this is 5,000 pixel tall by 3264 wide. And of course you can set that however you need to for whatever size uh, images your camera shoots. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to cancel out of this one for a minute and we'll go back to the project I've already got set up. Okay, so here we are back with my project where I've imported a couple photos. So this one is set up just the same as the other project was. And you know it would be good to maybe even have a background in here, so let's pull a background in. I'm Okay, so I've gone to Bridge and I've pulled a background in and I've saved it as a JPEG and I've, I'm going to import that into my project. And of course I am in, of course I am in Photoshop here at this point. And now I'm back into Premiere and I'm going to import that background. Okay, so now I have a background in here. Now, one of the things I can do right quick, I know I want to drop, kind of drop that background behind these, uh, these images here so I can see if I'm getting all the pixels squared away really good. I'm going to pull this up on the next line. So this is video two. I'm leaving video one underneath here so I can pull the background in, pull the background down, and pull it underneath each of these. Now, I want to get rid of all this green and see what I've got. And, and you can see here his hair is pretty problematic. Let's go in here about 100%, and you can see I'm going to have some problems with this hair. If you're in Photoshop and you work in Photoshop a lot, you're familiar with how difficult this can be to get all this green out. So let's go back to a, a, fit, a fit view here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here to the effects and I'm going to type in Ultra. Ultra is a great um, key, keying program that has been bought from a company called Serious Magic years ago from Photoshop. I'm going to pull the Ultra over here and put it on top of this photo. And then I'm going to go up over here under, uh, you see you have effects controls here. 
A lot of times it'll be under, hit under source clips. It'll come up maybe that way, but you hit effects control there. Then you can twirl down your ultra key. And it's as simple as this. You get the little eyedropper here beside key color. And you go and you try to pick a good medium green, probably close to his head. And wow, it looks like it's done it pretty well already, doesn't it? And actually, it really always, there's some little uh, gray transients in here because you probably have not gotten all of the gray or the green out of this. And those little trashy bits will show up as, uh, as little gray specks. So what I do, I generally go to matte generation right here, this little key underneath there, or a little twirl down, and go to pedestal. Click your pedestal and go down, and I usually go up about 30% or 40%. And I can turn, I'm going to go over and turn the eyeball off on video one, which has my background on it. And I should be able to see that that looks pretty clean. Now, uh, this guy here, Eric, is not centered up in my picture, but I can go over here under motion on the video up here and go under motion, and I can go under position. This one over here to the left is the left and right horizontal. So I'm just going to slide him back a little until I get him positioned about where I want him. And that looks pretty cool. Now the thing, you know, let's face it, I might not want to use this background. This is a background I can use and I can export this frame right now into Photoshop and everything would be great. But let's say I just want to keep a Photoshop layer with an alpha and I might want to put 15 different backgrounds or I might want to assemble him with other people, put other people behind him or something. So I'm going to turn this background eyeball off for now. Okay, so now all I have is just Eric here isolated on, the, on this layer. And I'm going to go to this little camera switch over here. It says Export Frame. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to pick the PNG. PNG has a alpha. It's transparent in the background. If I pick JPEG, then I would be exporting something with a with a black background. I don't want that. I want no background. So I'm going to go to PNG. And uh, this is going to the right folder, Eric Woody Portraits. And let's call this something like Eric. No background. I'm going to say OK, and it takes a few seconds for it to export this because it's going to be a pretty big file with an alpha on it. So, you know, be patient. It might take as much as 20 seconds or so to build this file. We'll take a look at it here just in a moment. And it looks like it's done it. I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to open that file. So here's my, my file, Eric, no background. I can open it up and see, yeah, that's pretty good. There's absolutely... Uh, Nothing, and there's a little bit of gray still here. I could go in here with my eraser tool. I could clear a little bit more of that out. Get rid of as much of that as I need to. But as you can see real quickly and very elegantly, I mean, you can see the hair there. Now, my, my, my focus was not great around his hair. I focused more on the front of his face. But you can see this is real subtle. I can put any background I want to behind that. There's no fringing. There's no weirdness anywhere at all on it. As long as you've got a fairly well-lit background, then this works fantastically. And I'll do another one so you can see it. Let's go back to Premiere. So once again, here's another person. And you can see here I've got, of course, the background behind him as well. Once again, just uh, we'll use the Ultra key. You pull the Ultra key from over here under Effects. You just type in Ultra, and it's going to pull up in the little box. Pull it over here. Again, we'll twirl down the Ultra key. We'll take the eyedropper, we'll pick a green that's close to him there. We'll watch it do its magic. And then we're probably going to go down again. I'm going to go down and do matte cleanup, or excuse me, matte generation. And pedestal. Pedestal works great. You take it up about, say, a 30% somewhere along in there. And then we can turn our background on, just kind of look at it. I like to have a background in just to see. It shows me how if it's going to look clean or not. So that looks pretty clean right there. It's going to be great. So I'm going to turn it back off again. Don't have to do that step, but it's something I like to do. So now, once again, I'm going to export frame here. And we're going to call this Shannon. No background. And I'm going to hit say OK. And you can see here, I did probably get, there's a little bit more trash down in here. Once again, this is just so much simpler than... This is just so much simpler than almost any way that I've done this in Photoshop. I'm going to do a large eraser here and get rid of the rest of this gray down here. And that 
actually wouldn't it's, it's all transparent that little gray down there so you wouldn't even probably even notice it but so that, here we go and i can put any background of course behind him again let's take a look we're in photoshop again let's just look at that hair complex kind of hair situation there and yeah i mean it trails off just a little bit there's it puts a little bit of transparency and all in there but when you drop a background behind that it's nice and soft and it looks just beautiful matter of fact let's pull that background in that we had on the other one i'm gonna do a new layer and i'm gonna pull it behind him and let's do a let's look at that that looks really nice you're not going to have any problem doing particularly portrait work and stuff with backgrounds with that and you know it's taken me longer to explain how to do it than it is to actually do it typically i can do this kind of stuff i can do a portrait in about a minute uh, if i know what i'm doing just pull the uh, if i know where all my files and things are and what background i'm going to use just select your background pull the photo in do an ultra key export and there you go you lose absolutely no pixels you lose no resolution and of course you can go in here now at this point to select select his layer and you can edit let's say you wanted to do a brightness contrast a little bit on this and give him a little more a little more pop there then i can certainly do that without affecting the background so there you go a quick tutorial on how to use ultra out of premiere to knock out your backgrounds in Adobe Photoshop.